Hello, David. Hi, Judith. How are you? Good, good. So, what should we talk about today? I don't know. We'll just see how, where it goes. <laughs> see where it goes. Yes. What time is it with you anyways? So it's like uh, half past seven or something at night? Yes, half past seven in the evening. Yes, it's it's um, just getting dark now. So, you know. Oh, is it? Yeah, we're coming into, um, no, actually, there's still light. We're coming into, we've begun autumn. Uh -huh. So um, the days are getting shorter and um, daylight saving will end, I think, at the end of this month. So, oh, do you daylight saving as well? Yes, so daylight saving yeah. ends at the end of this month and we go into shorter days and proceed into winter. Yeah, it's <laughs> getting used to because I, uh, I'm still getting used to Scottish seasons and stuff again you know because when I was in Japan there was they don't have daylight saving and things like that but in Scotland we do um I'm still sort of getting used to that now now it's getting really I think it's another well maybe it's the same time as Australia they start doing that another few weeks and then they, they change the clocks and things, but. okay but they have the seasons there too don't they yes of course yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's just we seem there seems to be so much light in in, in Scotland, uh, in early morning to, the, to evenings compared to to uh, in Japan where it was always got dark so early. But uh, it's just the way that. Oh, I've never been to Japan. You yeah. should go. You be there. It's sort of halfway if we sort of do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, it's rather exotic, isn't it? Uh, I know my son was studying Jap Japanese in uh, college and. Um, all right. Okay. I wanted to go, but um, yeah, no, I've never fancied actually going there. <laughs> I did my, you've been there and I mean, you live mm. there, so you did yeah. most of your spiritual study and, and that there, didn't you? Well, that was part of it, wasn't it? It was, uh, I didn't go there specifically to do that, but uh, yeah, I, when I was uh, over there sort of, um, things started i started moving in that direction or things started the spiritual things started to manifest so yeah that was really part of where it started um but then now that i'm back in in, in scotland i've been back here for six, seven months now mm -hmm. um um so yeah i think it's it's more of a sort of an integration now i, I think we're going through so last time we talked a few weeks ago mm -hmm. and we were talking about like well since the first time we really chatted mm. uh, a lot of things have sort of changed to, for us um integration wise i think haven't they yes yes and so i thought that was something I, I wanted to ask you about like how has that been going for you this sort of uh um, integration process i feel more stable mm. I feel uh, very much um, this past couple of weeks, I've actually felt very much more stable back, really feeling in my body, so to speak. Um, uh, I don't have a lot of earth in my <laughs> astrological chart, I've been told. So I'm very, I find it hard to ground myself here. It's like, I'd rather be whoop over, you know, in <laughs> other um, realities and, and um off in my world of fantasy, hence being a painter was great, you know. Um, right. So I could um, just shut myself off for, you know, days on end and just immerse myself in it. Um, but I didn't have the grounding to, you know, deal with stability here on Earth. Mm -hmm. So we're here in, in this physical body walking in between worlds I felt like I was in between worlds if that mm -hmm. makes sense and um, now I feel kind of stabilized in my true nature and I can still be in the world and I know how to navigate better if that makes sense yeah, I think so. I mean, this this integration process is is really sort of a a passing between in between two worlds, as you say, or in between two sort of um, 
uh, phases really there was the mm. phase of where were identified with this in separate per, as a separate person and then there's this the, the new reality which is you are and know yourself to be infinite consciousness um and there's this sort of transitory phase where you're neither one nor the other sort of thing <laughs> and um and that's really what you know when you hear people talking about the dark night of the soul you hear this a lot in spiritual and spiritual speak the dark night of the, of the soul and and what that is is, is is really this um an intensified uh period of being between these to um, uh, to to sort of situations um, where you've you've disconnected from being a an individual person, but you're not yet stabilized in this new uh, understanding of of being the, the the of your infinite nature and sort of so that plays out differently for different people. It can be a sudden intense thing which can throw people way off if they've never had any spiritual understanding or anything before it's when it comes out of nowhere if you've had some kind of spiritual um understanding or study before it may not be as as, as painful and then if you then if you've been a spiritual seeker let's say for 20 years then it may be slightly more slightly easier um so yeah i think that's what it is this is sort of plays out you're between these two um two sort of op opposites but you know talking about grounding of course the ultimate grounding is to recognize recognizing yourself as infinite being as infinite consciousness mm -hmm. that's what you are and that has never changed throughout the whole thing. You're, you have all you have always been that you are that you always will be that so um this is the ultimate grounding is whatever is going on uh, is to come back to this or continue to recognize yourself as uh, awareness as, as consciousness and this is how you you can you you can ultimately ground yourself in your true being mm. yes yes i mean and, and the the world going on or whatever the activity that's going on is just that yes activity that's going on so um i think the first time we spoke um is uh, I was actually talking about that where I got discombobulated in that space. I was yeah. neither here nor there and I was trying, I couldn't quite work out. I knew I had shifted, like it had, it had shift, I had shifted, but I wasn't fully grounded in being. And it, it really threw me because, um, yeah, yeah, it just, became quite de destabilizing and uh yeah so i'm understanding all of that now and it's like okay i'm really feeling good and stable and from here you can make choices as to what um what you want to pursue what what you'd like to actually now partake in in as a being <clears throat> in this world yes so it's a diff from a different perspective altogether and yes because limitation has gone hasn't it because before we were identified as a limited separate self yeah. and 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 we we were in this sort of uh, uh mental cage of what we cannot do and we're, we're limited to doing this and that and and when we then recognize ourselves to be unlimited infinite and then sort of you you are free to to really live your life in a completely open and authentic way i think that you were talking i think last time we we, we chatted we, we were not recording but i think last time we chatted you used this word authenticity or authentic living yeah. that's yeah. really really word because you suddenly do feel that you're you're um experiencing life uh, uh and living life authentically yeah yeah but it's almost like a complete transparency and and you're because there's nothing that the human was the one that sort of controlled everything and wanted to hide and protect and counter this and but now it's like it's open yes and and free 
And yes, and we're, we're just allowing everything to, to manifest. Um, there's no uh, restriction as it should, things should be going this way or shouldn't be going that way um, because we've, we, we, we're not grabbing hold of life. Uh, we're not trying to grab it and manipulate it anymore. Um, we, we're, we're, we're just sort of uh, allowing it to, to be, or allowing whatever manifesting to manifest because it's ultimately it's all happening. And this is the groundbreaking realization, isn't it? That there's really, there's, there's nothing you can do. <laughs> yes. Oh, so all the doing was actually holding everything back. It's like holding a tight rein on this flow that is just a natural flow. That's right. That's right. It's the river flowing and you're trying to hold it back. And it's like, it's not going to work, really. <laughs> Yeah, it's like in order to, uh, to to live life, you have to let go of it. Yeah. You have to, to, to you know, let it let it be. And when you let it be, you notice that it's just going on anyway. There was, there was never anybody there who was uh, controlling it. The fact that you thought that you were controlling it was the tension and the stress that you were that you were that you were feeling. It's just going on and it's going on. Um, even the word going on just sounds strange because you, you put it into, you know, when we start using words, we start to fall into this sort of um, dualistic uh, yes. way of, but it's just, there's a, there's a, a sort of uh, a feeling, first of all, that all the, the, the you're nothing at all. Um, mm -hmm. There is no David and that, that feeling of being an individual self disappears, you are infinite consciousness. And then we start to feel that, oh, we're, we're everything, we're everything that's going on. Yes. And then you start to move into this everything and, and, and nothing is happening and not happening. And, and then the words stop and there's just a sort of a naturalness, which is beyond happening and not happening. Yes. Um, which, which, we, which, which we are. We're just this this infinite uh, being, um, um, and all this is happening within us. For me, um, thoughts didn't stop. I don't know if they did for you, but the the um, disruptive thoughts, yes. But it's like there may be a thought to do something and I proceed with that or sometimes I'd be driving and it's like where am I going and all of a sudden <laughs> you know it's to go here or to go there or whatever it is and it's perfectly right so so there are thoughts but it's not the same as before it's it's not like you don't stop thoughts don't just stop altogether in my um, experience anyway. Yeah, and but your identification with the thoughts has stopped. That's right, yes, yes. So you no longer identify yourself as being Judith who likes this and does that, and, and that's who you are. All that identification has stopped. You can't stop thoughts, thoughts will appear, yeah. but they do. They manifest within consciousness as everything else as a little bundle of energy like everything else it's all just sort of energy isn't it yeah. uh, so it's it, thoughts manifest um and pop into your head and things but the identification with them is not there that has been yeah. that has been cut. and and so that's where the freedom lies isn't it and that goes for any kinds of thoughts whether they be you know negative thoughts or, or positive thoughts I mean there are really no negative or positive there's all, it's all just mm -hmm. there are thoughts that appear um, but the, the when you when you identify with them that's when you're trapped yeah. um, cage isn't it um, it's the difference I think mm -hmm. I feel that you can notice the difference because you have the body is a sensory perception becomes sensory perception then and so you can notice when there's a constriction you, you, you can feel it you can sense yes. it and you can feel it and yet when there's openness and free flowing it's just expansive and there's peace and there's this 
um, almost like a joy, but without any any um, need for it or, or any reason for it. But it is it's there. It's an underlying sort of field of of stability. Yeah. Yeah, that's when we and when we are not identified with the thoughts, and we also in that. Uh, awareness we recognize that the body itself is a thought is like the body itself is a concept yeah. the, the body and the world appear as concepts within consciousness and mm -hmm. so when we're we disidentify with apparent thoughts we, we also disidentify with the thought that that we are a body or the thought okay. that we are in a um and so that that identification with that is also gone and it's still it's still going on it's not that you know things just don't sort of go poof and disappear you know things um it's still going on mm. um apparently um within our own within our own mind we we invent this concept of body and and um world every single um uh, morning when you apparently wake up and uh, suddenly it's it's reinvented again mm. um just appearing as a, as a concept so that whole identification with all kinds of uh with with thought mind um disappears and then it's all just it's all just happening yes yes and we can choose to really enjoy it you know like have a have a ball with with the fact that i'm alive um or we can choose a more subtle and, and a more steady or, or mm. quieter experience. It, it's up to us, really, in this, in this whole, um, what's, what's the experience. experience. Yes. yes, the experience. We can choose whatever experience. Yeah, and it's also but it's an experience without the experiencer, isn't it? It's not uh, when, when we, I think when we use the word experience, we tend to we, you, it's easy to fall into a dualistic. There is ex, somebody who is experiencing a person who is experiencing an experiencer who is experiencing something, but actually it's just all just beingness. It's all just experiencing experiencingness to just coin coin a new phrase <laughs> but, um uh, so you know there's this constant sort of um i i like the, just the word naturalness this is a word that comes up in tau quite a lot just this there's just this sort of naturalness where where things are just going on um and you know, you said, you know, you're talking about choosing there. And of course, within as infinite being, as infinite consciousness, we are there, inf infinite consciousness can uh, express itself in infinite ways and does express itself yeah. in yeah. infinite ways. So, so, and infinite possibilities are available. So, yeah. that's what I'm within, saying. You're right. So, that's what's going on. Whatever you're apparently Sort of choosing to do it is a is an option within infinite consciousness so of course it's available there yeah for you right for a while i sat there with with it's like what what do i do now you know what do, what do i <laughs> and because it was like well everything that i had um sort of in that the person had enjoyed or uh, found pleasurable or whatever kind of just went poof <laughs> and uh, so I sat there going well I'm actually not excited about anything what do I do now <laughs> and, and, that, then, <laughs> and that's okay too yeah well it, it took me a little while and then I thought okay well I'm I'm rather bored sitting here I better do something and slowly you know I started engaging again with people and what have you and things just started to happen just like you said organically it just uh, began like yes it's, began. i came across um something which had popped into my conscious awareness years ago when i was in japan when i was sort of interested in zen and, and doing a bit of zazen meditation stuff at home and things and um 
there are, I don't know if you know the 10 ox herding pictures. So in Zen Buddhism, there, is a, there was a, there's a series of 10 pictures, which is a metaphor for, how, for um, achieving enlightenment or self-realization. And it's about a, 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 a young boy who's chasing the ox, his ox, and, or, and the ox is a, a, a metaphor for enlightenment or self-realization. Oh. And it is really interesting to, uh, they popped up again in a book that I was looking through, and um, they're really brilliant. And, and the very final um, uh, painting is the boy who, uh, the ox is gone, and he is back in the marketplace, back in the world, again interacting with with people and the ox herding pictures are brilliant because they're written as a sort of linear process and of course anybody who has been through what, what we are talking about um will know that it's not a linear process you can jump up here and jump back three steps and go here and there um but uh, nonetheless it's very interesting what you were saying and what i feel now too which is this organic uh natural um need to go back into the world because there's during this sort of process if we just call it a process for, for the time being um there's a, a often a feeling to retreat from the world to be by yeah. yourself yes um and um and that's all part of, that's fine as well and then you know uh, that's uh that's all part of it but it just um it's interesting that, that what you're talking about um, popped up um, the other day for me when I was looking at these these, these pictures. Hmm. Yeah, I mean it's it's brilliant, perfect analogy because that's exactly what I what I meant. It's like I'm, and we're both now ready to re-emerge um, after finding that stability. For me, it was finding the stability once again, <laughs> but for you, it was like this time. And, and it's, um, it's a necessary process, I feel. It's a necessary process because it's, it's quite, uh, if it comes on, you know, suddenly, it can be quite disconcerting if you don't have somebody there to say, yeah, no, you're right, this is what is happening, yes. whatever. It's really quite important, I feel, to have someone that you can talk to, to... Mm -hmm. um, Somebody say to you, okay, this is normal. Yeah. It's natural. Yeah. Don't worry. Don't freak out. And yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I think, you know, from, from my own pers perspective, it's been quite interesting, especially meeting a lot of people who have um, had uh, self-realization in the last year or so, mm -hmm. and, and meeting a lot of people who have had no previous let's say spiritual understanding beforehand where it suddenly just come it has been very very uh disconcerting and, and, and unstable uh, destabilizing yes. um for for many many people and i i haven't really felt that although i, I can't say i've been immune in the last mm -hmm. year that uh, of course, uh, I've, I've had some physical changes, um, uh, things I've noticed within the, the, the body I've noticed. Um, uh, and there's been one or two th things, but I compared to, to people who have had no previous, previous spiritual understanding. I think in my case, I, I, there seems I've had that sort of stability because I've been doing various sort of practices mm -hmm. and and I've been able to, 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 you know, go back into a meditative state or whatever. Mm. But of course, in order to stabilize things where I feel a bit out of source. But um, of course, a lot of people, some people don't even know what, what meditation is, for example. Yeah. Um, so have that resource, yeah. don't have any talk to. Um, and um, yeah, it can be a very, very um, uh, shocking um for, for for people and so it's almost like actually i i've recommended to one or two people that that it might be good for them to to start doing a sort of a meditation now sort of yes. after yes. um this realization has uh, occurred um 
just to help you stabilize, just to have that sort of, uh, as you said, the word grounding, to have that yes. ground, grounding. And you're grounding in yourself. You're grounding in, yes. you know, in consciousness, which is the ultimate grounding. And I think that just being able to encourage people to do that um, is, is would be very, very useful, as well as explaining that, you know, it's quite a normal, this is a yes. very normal thing to worry. Yes, that's why I think talking to people like yourself and, you know, um, I'm there as well if people want to speak with me. And and we'll link our websites below mm. so that people can contact us if they need, need to speak to us about this. And that's the purpose of um, these videos and things because now especially more than ever like you said a lot of people are waking up a lot of people are disgruntled with the situations that are going on in their life and in the world and what have you and need more of an understanding not only as to what's going on but how to cope with what is going on mm -hmm. and I feel that's also part of what you and I both offer in terms of come back to this recognition of who you really are and from that place you find that there's peace and you find that that's your stable core you know that's the authentic place that we were talking about so yes yeah that's right and so yeah there's two points there that the, before the, if i take the, the last one first which is that that thing that we've been looking for which everybody is looking for this happiness and peace is actually who we really really are and and so what a revelation to find out that what you are looking for you already are yeah. <laughs> you <don't have> <laughs> Oh, stop working here and there, you know. So that's the sort of first first thing about that. But the, and then the, the the former point about um, you know being able to people to contact us and things. I think yeah, I've mentioned this before, whether it was in a talk with you or somebody else, that um, this sort of era of having to go to the guru and sit at their feet and all that kind of thing. I think we're really moving out of that now because so many people are really waking up. And so, and and certainly, I've I've met people who have woken up and been quite destabilized by it. And so, you know, having a sort of friend to talk to who's through that is is really really important. And I think that's what what we're really sort of moving into now. It's just you know when you have. You know, it's like anybody who's who has a good friend who you've been through some trouble in your life and you want to chat to them about it. Um, you you talk to your friends about it. Here we're talking about self realization, and I think it's just being open um, mm -hmm. uh, to let people contact and things. Because the wonderful thing about this, normally when we make friends, uh, we make friends based on our own preferences. Uh, we make friends based on uh, similar hobbies, uh, similar mm. background, similar uh, uh, pastimes and TV shows and whatever they like. This is the criteria that we normally bond with people and make friends with. Wonderful thing about uh, re recognizing your true nature is that you realize everybody is your friend. <laughs> and, you, and you immediately bond uh, with people on the deepest level. Mm -hmm. And talk with them and uh, uh, have a connection with them. Uh, somebody who physically you've never met, like us, for example, um, where we, we, we have bonded and, and chat started. And the first time we met, we started chatting to each other as if we'd known each other um, forever. And we have in, in the deepest sense. <laughs> yes, ultimately, the one source. That's right. That's yeah. right. We're all yeah. the one. Yes. So uh, this is a, the, the wonderful uh, thing about it, uh, is that you really connect with people at the source, as the source. Yes. Um, and uh, who would have thought, you know, that we, it's so, so uh, easy to and, and make friends and very uncomforting. And it, yes, and it doesn't matter um, how long or when it happened or, or any of that. It, it really, 
ultimately it's it comes down to I am you and you are me that kind of um, recognition with everyone which um, for a human not understanding this it might be a bit bizarre but it's actually quite natural it's our natural state of being and yes I find that so um, enriching really it's enriching and, and it's um, so you're not I've always said I remember saying this to my son before any of this happened with me and he was young I would say to him you never look down on someone and you never look up to someone you look them straight and honor them and respect them as they are and I don't know where that came from but it was there obviously it was right there for me way yes. back when you know I spent my early days um, trekking all over India and the Himalayas and all all manner of places and in search of this but I didn't actually know that I was searching for enlightenment or realization or any other. I didn't know that was it all I knew was that it was it felt more natural it felt more me yes you know and um of course yes it is <laughs> ultimately you go oh yeah of course it is so <laughs> yeah that, that's how that's interesting you should say that because that's how i felt going to japan you know when i was what, 26 27 i went i was living in london and i wanted to i just felt this you know i'd always had that push so i wanted to go to to the far east and 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 um and I'd, i i had no thoughts of self-realization or all that kind of stuff um at that time either but there was just something um urging to go mm. there um but uh it's interesting that having done all that and not that i would ever um you know uh, undo any of it um I, I do say to to people that that you know you really don't have to go anywhere at all <laughs> to to um, to find yourself. Yeah, that's what I was getting at because um, getting back to what we were talking about before, where it's always here and you're always automatically being guided. You know, um, so that's the perfect example where we both have that. We both went searching off somewhere, but actually we were being guided back to ourselves. And you don't actually have to do that. Now it's happening faster and you don't have to go looking for a guru in India or, or anywhere else. There are people, there are so many more people around now mm. for guidance. And, and I find it's exciting in, in that way. It really is exciting. And life actually takes you that was the mm. what you began with it's like life just takes you where you need to go life is happening did you stop your video david oh no there you are <laughs> it's frozen for a moment now it's frozen time <laughs> right, go ahead oh you didn't hear me so life is actually happening, is what I was saying, you know. Yes. And and us as an example, you know, me trekking to India and you going off, you know, being taken to Japan or whatever, life is happening, happening through you, through us. So we don't actually have to, um, the human was never really in control. Yes, that's right. Because the the, the 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 separate person never ever existed. Yes, it was just a mis <clears throat> example. That, yeah, that's right. That's the realization, I think. Mm -hmm. And taking that one step further is is you know we can there's a there's people that will fall into sort of the you know life is it's all just happening, it's all just happening, and that's probably the best way to just say it. Mm -hmm. But of course. Really, there's nothing happening at all. Nothing yeah. ever happened. Yeah. Nothing ever happened. Nothing is happening. Yeah. And then we go into 
to, to the other the other way, and and of course um, uh, there was something you mentioned earlier. Uh, you know, when you were talking a lot about the body and things, um, there's a tendency I've noticed recently in 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 non dual circles, especially in this uh, sort of more radical non-dual circle, which is to go into this, um, you know, there's nothing happening and nothing going on. And, and yes, of course, there is nothing. The, the realization that nothing ever happened yeah. is absolutely wonderful. Yeah. But again, um, it's easy to get stuck in a cul-de-sac of, uh, of, of there where uh, the, the ego can really easily creep in and there's this feeling of I've got it I know it nothing nothing happened nothing's happening and so it's very very it gets subtler and subtler but it's really really easy to fall into either one camp or the other mm -hmm. um, whereas um, if you are staying as this nothing you know everything and nothing happening beyond everything and nothing Mm. Um, where words then stop um, and there's life is sort of flowing in this natural way mm. um, and and there's a that sort of knowingness of that and that is pretty much as much as you can say in words uh, about it really yes and that's the the tricky bit I find that's what got me where the oh there's nothing happening and there's no one but well what do i do then and you know there's this fleshy suit sitting here <laughs> what, what, do, what do i do with it so you know it can be a little bit tricky and a, um, i found i didn't follow the non-dual path but everything is you know it's all one and the same really and uh, in my opinion, anyway, um, well, all paths lead to non-duality. I think in the end, <laughs> lead to the the same realization. But um, I found that that that's quite, like you said, it can be quite um, disempowering, in a way. Even though there's, there's no power, or you know, it's. It's more, I don't know how to explain it. Like, like you said, words, words, <clears throat> words are just words, but um, there is nothing to actually explain this state. No. When you get to a certain point, it's like you can't explain it in, in that way. You just yeah. back to the, the ever present recognition yes there's that that's beautiful i think what, what you said there that's that, that's really really beautiful you know i i i have such a, a deeper appreciation now of 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 poetry and especially um japanese haiku which okay. is you, you make a very very short form of poetry yeah. and um they often write about you know just nature just the flowers or the sunset or the birds or whatever there's a wonderful japanese zen poet monk who i, I love called ryokan mm -hmm. and um he wrote a lot of these short forms of poetry and um uh yeah he just talks about uh, these things you know the the the, the flowers blooming uh, um there's 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 a, a wonderful one which I think sums up this sort of conundrum, which is no conundrum, which is that uh, something along the lines of uh, pretty flowers in the meadow, too, or something like too pretty to pick, too pretty not to pick, and and there lies what we're just what we're talking about there. But yeah. you know that's. And, also ties into back into what I was saying about the oxherding pictures, where in the end, in the end of this, where you just come back into the marketplace, and there's people people selling their goods and chatting about this and that, and and, and there you are. So life is the living of it. You know, as soon as you say it's this or it's that, then you've killed it. Yes, it's not 
Um, and it's like the old, you know, the, the Taoist phrase, I think it's in the Tao Te Ching of he who says he knows does not know. Um, as soon as you say it's this or that, you've missed it. <laughs> Exactly, because you're you're narrowing it down to a definition, and it's not a definition. No, it's not. That's a, right. It can be anything. Anything. It's whatever. It, what is whatever it's manifesting. That's what yeah. what it is. So. Yes. In your part, in your apparent dream. Mm. Yeah, I love the. Um, um, the artist Agnes Martin, I'll mention again, because I, I really enjoy, um, I think she was uh, a Zen Buddhist. I think she, she followed Zen Buddhism. And so um, her philosophy was when she woke up each morning, it was, what are we going to do today? So the her physicalness would have a chat with her expansive infinite and say what are we going to do today and All right she, and she would sit in her chair until the impetus came to actually paint and so she would get the little um paintings in a small um postage size stamp image in her mind and she would meticulously enlarge it and that was her painting and it was just pure innocence and pure being limitless it, it just it felt like innocence and i know that's been coined her paintings were because it's just it's not an image it's just these expansive lines and it can mean anything yes the yes, I, the word is brilliant because you do come back to this innocent state, which you you, you ultimately start off as, um, and then you you've always really been that. It's just you get you got caught up in your in, in, in misconceptions, but you do come back to the innocence and and a wonderful curiosity um, mm -hmm. of of life. I've I've found just a a wonderful innocent childlike curiosity. Um, and which for me has been wonderful because I was always somebody that was very afraid of people. I was very afraid of, of, of talking to other people or what other people thought or were maybe saying about me or this or that. And, um, but now um, I just, it's just wonderful to go and, and give somebody a smile, a little chat to somebody the street, a little comment to somebody here or there. Um, and it's just all life, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's. I had similar to you where I was afraid of the outside world because it was quite, I felt quite bombarded with, because um, I was sensitive, I could feel and everything. And I didn't know what was mine and what wasn't mine. And I had to actually mm. clearly um, define that, I guess. And um, now I understand it in a, in a way from the place of presence. And you can see everything much clearer from this vantage point where, you know, from pure consciousness, from pure being, you can see everything yeah. much more clearly. It's like yeah. that um, subjective person is no longer there. And... And therefore, like you said, you're free to go and smile and engage with someone and everything is is much more open and, and pleasurable, really. Yeah, that, that, that's right. There's no denial of anything. It's an openness, acceptance of, of, of everything. Because one thing I, I know tends to happen with a, a, a lot of people, especially those that get stuck in the sort of nothingness, is a sort of denial of the body and a denial of that. Um, and, um, you know, and the whole sort of, you know, everything is a dream. Mm. Yeah, okay. Thing does appear as, as, a, as a dream, a waking state dream. Um, but that's not to deny it. Um, 
it's all going on and and so we we accept it as it as it is and there's just there's no new reason to sort of um have any uh disregard for for the body for example mm. uh, the body's a the body appears in your mind as a concept mm. um fine <laughs> and uh, let's just get get on with it. And and the, the body's a wonderful wonderful thing. We can do so much with with this. Um, I mean, if you want to eat um, cake for breakfast, eat chocolate cake for breakfast. Knock yourself out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just whatever. There's no rules. Yeah. No, no, there's not, and and everything will you you will naturally do what 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 uh, is meant for you to do anyway. I mean, we, you know, Alan Watts used to drink himself silly. You know, Nisargadatta was a chain smoker. Um, somebody else likes to eat chocolate for breakfast. Knock yourself out. Go for it. Yeah, yeah. There's no judgments. All judgments and shoulds and have tos disappear. And mm. I mean, they're seen as the smoke screen that they were really. It's just yeah. nonsense that that conditioning <laughs> we took on with conditioning and yeah. not necessary at all. And everything kind of dissolves in the light of this awareness that we are. That's what yeah. I'm and there's. That's right. That this this sort of awareness, and there's this. I use the word curiosity, but there's also this sensing of harmony. Mm. That, mm. that 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 this holding everything in this wonderful embrace, you know, um, which you become very much more sensitive. I to. find that the deeper um, I go within, into this, into the the awareness the true nature i can sink deeper and deeper in and it's just such a it's such a love it's like a that's the only word i can this use to describe it because we have to use words but there's such the such a, an unconditional love of of this space that is yeah it's almost like it's almost like, or it's almost like the flower and its scent isn't it it's like mm -hmm. you know we recognize ourselves to be the flower of, of infinite consciousness and the scent of the flower is this unconditional love mm -hmm. and and you can't have one it's it's really one and the same thing isn't it i mean you can't have the flower without the scent or the scent without the flower so it's one and the same thing um so this unconditional love is your true yeah. being it's your true being yes you're such a poet today david i don't know what it is it must <laughs> be something like the coffee or something i think it's, it might have been an irish coffee i had this morning coming <laughs> oh, on. out of you today it's wonderful <laughs> the scent of the flower it's only 20 past nine in the morning but i peaked already i think <laughs> Oh, it's downhill from here. <laughs> that's, the, that's the end of my day. I'll go back to bed now, I think. Oh, well. <laughs> well, it's the end of my day, but it's only the beginning of your day, so it, you've got a lot of poetry to write. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll send you some. Yeah. Well, if we do this again, Jude. I think this is really, really nice, and it's really useful for people, I think, if we pick this stuff so, out. Yeah. So. yeah. Yeah. I think so, too. And... Um, all of these videos, if they're helping someone, you know, that's what it's all about. We're here to help. So if anybody needs that. So I find it fascinating. And it's been lovely talking to you again. We didn't have laughs as we did the last time, but we weren't recording it the last time, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> but never mind. We'll do it again. Um, do it again next time. Yes, we will. The possums Brilliant. are not eating the tomatoes anymore. <laughs> oh, well, you might poison us. <laughs> no, I've just had a walk. <laughs>
<laughs> no, I, I realized I wasn't actually getting any tomatoes anymore and the trees are withering away. So I thought, oh, well, that's it. They're all gone. <laughs> so cut off their supply chain. <laughs> oh, well. All right, thank yeah. you, David. All right, bye bye. Yeah, bye.